Hi guys, how are you all? Hope you all are doing very well. I am back again with the another unsolved problem of classical physics. In my last video, I discussed about the path changing problem of uh, object in parabolic motion. And uh, before starting today's video, I would like to just I would like to say one thing that I don't make the videos for fun or entertainment. I make the videos exactly to change to challenge every field system in the world to solve these problems. If they believe that their concept and calculation is correct, they must be able to solve these problems. Because personally, I tried to approach many physicists, but they could not solve these problems. So if you are physics lover, then uh, you are having a great chance to win 21,000 INR by solving these problems scientifically. Scientifically word is more important, Not on the, don't solve these problems on the basis of assumptions because science is having so many formulas just on the basis of formulas try to solve these problems. My contact details are in the last of the video or in the end and in the description also of the video. And I bet you that even your physics teachers and professors they also can't help you to solve these problems. Only my theory given in this book can solve these problems easily very easily so you must try it with your teachers and professors if they can solve this if they can help you so you can win 21,000 INR if they are not able to solve these problems so definitely just give me a chance to solve these problems I can solve these problems very easily so yes you must give it a try with your teachers and professors and uh, with your colleagues anywhere wherever you are having a chance and I hope that definitely on internet social media platform someone will take me to the my expert that who would be able to solve my problems or they will be ready to listen my theory that is definitely going to solve each and every problem and today i will shred your belief in the newton's second law f is equal to ma so here i go with the unsolved problem classical physics that is the concept of f is f is equal to ma and uh, in this uh, video my focus will be on the behavior of the force result of the force and the calculation of the force so you also must focus on to this before starting this topic i would like to tell you an important point that this law cannot be proven you can check it anywhere but it is believed that it is correct in classical physics most basic concept is of force because force is the main cause for the activities in the universe in present science, definition of force is the push or pull on an object with mass that causes it to change its velocity. Generally, the result of force is defined by two formulas. First one, F is equal to ma, m is mass of the object and a is the acceleration. And second is F is equal to delta p upon delta t, where p is momentum and t is time. Both the equations are used as per our convenience. Now let's come to the practical. There are many types of forces like frictional force, tension force, normal force, applied force, spring force, etc. But mainly four types of fundamental forces are believed. Gravitational force, electromagnetic force, weak force and strong force. We all know about the gravitational force. Other three forces have same behavior. So here we will take the example only of gravitational force. In classical physics, it is accepted and formulated that force causes acceleration and it is directly proportional to force that you can notice in the case of free fall. Velocity of object increases that means object is accelerating. Now take another example of force from our daily life. Let's see what happens when we push an object having mass of 8 kg with 5 Newton force. Object moves from point A and stops due to gravity at point B. You will notice that at point A, object will have maximum velocity and at point B, velocity will be zero. That means velocity is decreasing continuously. Hence, the object is decelerating, not accelerating. Why there is the different behavior of force? When we apply force, then it is not accelerating but decelerating. And in the case of free fall, object is accelerating. In the last of the video, you will come to know why it is not discussed. Now, some of you may say that gravitational force behaves differently because gravitational force is mass independent. So, there is difference in the result. But the definition of force applies in both cases. So, why should we not compare? And any classification of force also doesn't differentiate these two behaviors of force. 
Okay, let's leave the example of free fall. And let's take only the example one. In, and in this example, let's calculate the value of acceleration. That will be A is equal to F upon M. Here force is 5 Newton and mass is 8 kg. So acceleration A is 0 0.625 meter per second square. It means gained acceleration by the object is 0 0.625 meter per second square. In this example, we calculated the acceleration that is 0 0.625 meter per second square. Now let's calculate velocity. Hmm. But the calculation of velocity is not calculated anywhere using science formula, but they assume. Why do they assume without using formula? In the present scenario, the value of velocity is assumed same as the value of acceleration. That means, in this case, the value of object's acceleration is 0.625 meter per second square. So, the value of velocity will also be 0.625 meter per second. But how and why? No explanation. But we will find the value of velocity scientifically because there is formula between acceleration and velocity and that is A is equal to delta V upon delta T. Delta V is equal to V2 minus V1. V2 is final velocity that we need to know and initial velocity V1 is 0. So A is equal to V2 upon delta T. Uh, that means V2 is equal to A into delta T. So V2 is equal to 0 0.625 into delta T. So to calculate the velocity at the starting point, what value of delta T is used? Is it one second or one millisecond or one microsecond or one nanosecond? Because as per the formula, we cannot get the value of object's velocity without putting the value of delta T. Because the force is applied just for few milliseconds or for few microseconds. And in this case, the value of delta T should be one second or very close to one second. Because if they take the value 1 millisecond or 1 microsecond, then the value of velocity will be very less. Can any physicist explain why it happens and what is in this case? Now, another question. In the same example, object is having highest velocity at point A and at point B velocity is 0. It means velocity is continuously decreasing. That means object is not accelerating but decelerating. Thus, for any time interval between point A and point B, acceleration will be negative because final velocity V2 is always lesser than initial velocity V1. So, according to formula, value of acceleration will be negative. If acceleration is negative, then the value of force will also be negative. And if you calculate it by another formula of change of momentum, that is F is equal to delta P upon delta T, that means F is equal to mv2 minus mv1 upon delta T. Because v2 is lesser than v1, so value of mv2 minus mv1 will also be negative. So the value of force will also be negative. That negative force can be shown by opposite vector like this. So what does this negative force mean and how this opposite force will work? Any explanation? I know there is no explanation. It's also unsolved. Now one more little complicated example that will definitely shred your belief in F is equal to MA and will give you a brainstorm. Here's the example too. Now we push the same object having mass of 8 kg with 5 Newton force but for 5 seconds continuously from point A to point B. Now you will notice that object starts at point A and velocity increases continuously till point B and after point B velocity of the object starts decreasing and stops at point C. 
I have done many practicals. You also can do at your place. It happens exactly. You can notice that the result of same force on same object is different. And one more thing, you will notice in the example too, between point A and point B, force is behaving like gravitational force. As the object accelerates, due to gravitational force in the same manner in this example the object is accelerating from point a to point b now compare this example 2 with example 1 let's compare only these two examples because these examples are in same environment and the only difference is of time duration why there is different behavior of force in these two cases now your common sense and intuition will say that it is due to continuous force for 5 seconds in the second example and you are absolutely correct. And now you will be shocked to know that present concept of classical physics is not capable to calculate the gained velocity or acceleration in example 2 at point B. There is no formula and no method that's why no question is asked like this why i don't know the reason let's see what happens if we calculate there is no formula between force and velocity but formula is between force and acceleration now in both examples the value of acceleration will be f upon m and in both examples force is same and mass is also same so the acceleration will also be same but in the example, it is clearly visible that in example 2, velocity of object will be definitely much more than the example 1. According to formula, in example 2, value of acceleration will not be changed until in the right side of the formula, time duration t is not involved. But in present science, it is not there. For this type of condition, present classical physics is not having any formula that's why in classical physics this type of questions are never asked never discussed because present concept and calculation of classical physics cannot solve this no solution of this problem it's also unsolved and for all that there is no scientific explanation so guys did you notice that how much mess is in the formulation and calculation of velocity and in example 2 we are not able to do any type of calculation we are not even able to do the calculation for acceleration this much mess is in the present concept of classical physics but in my theory there is no mess very neat and clean theory there is no problem each and every problem is solved easily just waiting for a chance and a platform then I will show that uh, how I can solve all these problems. If you want to get the free copy of this book, so you can contact me. At least you must ask these questions to the teachers, professors. So if they can solve it, so you are having the chance to win 21,000 INR. But if they are not able to solve these problems, so please do raise voice for me so that this science community must listen that what I want to say or I want to say. And uh, only you guys can help me here and don't forget to like subscribe and share and thank you guys have a great time take care bye bye thank you